I'm gonna do a bit of clap. <laughs> Just literally like, <laughs> like, let me flare out my pussy. <laughs> Shall we take a second? <sighs> also, welcome this little fella. Does he have a name? Stevie. Oh, it's Stevie. Stevie Nix. Our power animal. Yeah, it is very much so. Two queer women, you know. Hello, my friends, and welcome to today's video. It's a different one because I have an amazing unicorn <laughs> sitting here next to me. Hello, this is Tiffany. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks for, um, I was gonna say, being on the show. I, mean, I, I don't even know what show, what am I talking about? I met Tiffany a couple of days ago through my friend Yvonne, who's sitting just behind the camera here. We went out for dinner, and I didn't really know that much about Tiffany, but she showed up in this Thai restaurant um in somewhere in west los angeles started talking about what she does which is orgasmic meditation that's her big kind of mm. thing as both queer women mm. um who've been on our journey inwards um i feel like we have quite a bit in common what is orgasmic meditation actually? Orgasmic meditation is a partnered body consciousness practice. Um, it's a goalless practice and I like to say that it hits the intersection of sexuality and consciousness. A man or woman strokes the upper left quadrant of another person's clitoris for 15 minutes <sighs> with no goal but just to feel. I'm sure that a lot of the like female viewers, or at least those that have a vagina, were feeling into the left quadrant of their clitoris right <laughs> it now. It just Am vibrated I Am for I me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Mine's <laughs> vibrating too. What this whole practice is for really is to give yourself the, a safe container for you to like let go of control. Because we all want to be taken out of control, but we want to know that we're safe to do so. For me, it's just been a very healing experience in itself. The struggle of like keeping repressed, of being closeted. I was closeted until I was 26 myself. So right. When we age. say closeted, we mean we were in the closet as the queer unicorns that we are. We weren't yeah. actually expressing and feeling deeply into these parts of ourselves. I'm like, how did you even find out about it? And, yeah, and great question, what, Rachel. what? sort of uh, caused you to embrace it as deeply as you are doing it now? Hmm. A partner of mine suggested to me four years ago and I remember looking at the website um, and felt really triggered and I honestly it came up with a story of I'm broken he's recommending this because our sex is just weird since you know I'm broke I was anorgasmic self-diagnosed that I just can't feel in my body and little did I know it was a lot of layers of just hiding who I really am. Um, so I looked at the website and it was just, what is this practice, clitoral stroking? It was way too intimate for me to handle at that time. Fast forward three years later of like the same patterns, the same conditioning of me, like forcing myself to have sex with men and not really feeling an integrity um, to my body. I, 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 would, I came to orgasm at a meditation at a point of desperation last July. Uh, I went to my first class in Berkeley and just completely surrendered to the fact that this could be a way out, you know? Like it it was like almost like a, a baby step towards feeling my body again. It was finally giving me the space that I needed to actually give my body the release that it had held and repressed for so long. After a year or so of the practice, I'm feeling a lot more sensations in my body, like my relationship with myself and with other people have changed. And um, I think that there's this like bright light that just radiates and emits out and that's what I call orgasm. I like my Powered by Orgasm shirt. And it's literally this like brilliance and this shine that like I get to attract so many people who are vibrating on that same frequency that is literally like so rainbow and magnetic and unicorn like. Um, and, I, and I'm pretty sure that's just like, we have that thing inside us inside us and I'm just removing all of the layers that I had that repressed it for the first time and truly coming out as I really am and it all it all like hinges down to like feeling body feeling the sensation and giving yourself permission to just be 
What I also find so fascinating about this whole thing is being a queer woman who was also in the closet for roughly plus minus 13, 14 years of my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I very much relate to you know what you just shared about repressing, suppressing, mm -hmm. not being in touch with you know <laughs> a lot of parts of your body, your sexuality, feeling sensual. Um, emotions, uh, anything that has to do with, yeah, feeling sensual and like a sexual human being. Mm -hmm. And because, like, as part of my story, um, I was, and you were saying the same thing, having sex with um, another gender that you're not actually enjoying. Um, for me personally, even though I absolutely adore men as they are, as beings, you know, um, but for me during all these years, it felt like. I was actually abusing myself um, by actually having consensual sex in that way. I kind of wish when you were telling me about our guest meditation, your story and your path um, into it, you know, I was like, oh man, how amazing would it have been for me to discover that back then when I had my coming out because it has been still, mm -hmm. you know, almost eight years later, um, I'm still dealing with certain parts um, of those 13, 14 years of you know, a lot of blocked energy, um, a lot of blocked sexual energy, a lot of emotional energy that's, you know, was just, if you think about it in a way that, you know, it, it was just like blocked and, and compressed somewhere in, in different parts of your bodies. And it almost feels like it's a little, uh, a beautiful little gift from the universe yeah. that, you know, you showed up in my life and also as being a queer woman yeah. as such. Um, and so how do you, how do you think that, like, orgasmic meditation especially for us queer people you know who and so many of us and if you're you know queer gay whatever label you're using but if you spend any time of your life in the closet mm. um i'm sure you can totally relate to what we're talking about here um just kind of want to find yeah. out more about how this practice really yeah can help especially yeah. our community um to really live our light more freely mm. and like folk people in the LGBT community who have so much heart yet keep so much inside because of shame or because of like not feeling like we belong in our heteronormative society we have so much voice that we we aren't even aware of and so what this practice is doing is like really having it be that it makes it almost impossible to lie because you can actually physically feel that dissonance between like what your body feels and what your voice wants to say. <sighs> How beautiful. Anyway, <sighs> breathing. Yes. Yeah. I've been like getting these like shocks from my like body now since doing this practice and it's like I've talked to Nicole Daydoen, the founder of this practice and she's like it's just my orgasms releasing and what I want to say to that is like it's just this sense of trust that I have in all of people like I came into the practice not having a lot of trust in men or like in like humanity for that matter it's like you don't get me or I don't get you I can't actually come like reveal who I am in sex and intimacy because I've just been cowering inside for so long, repressed. And um, so you also do this practice with men? I do this practice with men. Currently, the majority of strokers are men and that's why I'm here. I kind of want to like revolutionize this practice and spread it to more lesbians, more women, more gay folk who can really benefit so that if a woman who's coming out from sexual trauma or just like a lesbian woman who has preferences for women strokers, that we can have that. Right now, I my mission really is to change the culture of how we connect and relate to each other. Much like you, how can we open our hearts and express ourselves authentically and be that light, that radiant light for people by actually knowing who we are inside. So for the last, year and a half actually when I also started the practice my own healing modality was with remind me values where I would wear my values on my hand on my wrist and embody and integrate that into my life doing many challenges and writing about it my blog is remindmevalues.com and then I've got three three Instagram handles um, you can find me at personally at, at tifflin123 t-i-f-f-l-i-n-123 that's where I'll be posting where I'm traveling next and all I'll the put lectures. everything in the description oh, box awesome. below the video and maybe somewhere in the yeah. video right uh, here uh, all the things <laughs> if you like me to travel to you and do a lecture at your city holler 
Give her I, a shout. Yeah. She's a little gypsy, a little a little nomad herself. Yeah. <laughs> Traveling, orgasm, meditation, coach, embodiment, empowerment, mm. coach, all the things. Yeah, you do coaching. We yeah. totally actually didn't mention that fact. Mm -hmm. So if any one of you guys is interested in working with her yeah. um, and becoming her client for coaching sessions, then totally reach out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and if you guys have any questions about orgasmic meditation, mm -hmm. about anything, being queer in the closet and um, or any other question you might have for Tiffany, put it in the comment section below. If um, you liked and enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And thank you so much, Tiffany, for um, spending a little bit of time with us and yeah. my, my wonderful friends out there. So, yeah. And obviously, Stevie. Stevie is also in the mix. Thank yeah. you for yeah, having me. This was welcome. awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> yes. All right.